Welcome everyone to another one of my episodes in which I play games and stuff. And I totally don't make content about audio, programming and sound design. Nope, this is a Let's Player channel. You must be mistaken if you thought that I was someone else. And we are playing Vampire's Dawn today. Right now we are in the forest and we need to find our way out of this place. I already played against this enemy before and I know a good strategy. The strategy is to just go really hard on attack mode. However, this enemy can sometimes have pretty strong attacks, so you have to keep an eye on that. That was not the most heavy attack ever, so I can still just go forward with my plans. Yeah, and now I definitely won. But as you can see, Valna already has the life pretty far down, so there would be different strategies possible as well. For example, a fight where you stay more in defense mode in order to regenerate your health and then wait up until Valna can make a special move which also generates health and on your way there just suck some blood because basically you are a vampire and you need blood for casting spells and stuff. That is the short version of how the fighting system works in Vampire's Dawn because I don't want to spend too much time actually showing it off. I just say you should play the game if you like RPG Maker games. This thing is a banger. Today I want to talk about something else though. I want to talk about the aesthetic of RPG Maker game music. RPG Maker games often use so-called sound fonts in order to play music. So there are basically MIDI files in the games and they are mapped to certain instruments in all sound fonts usually in the same way or in a very similar fashion because they are defined by the so-called general MIDI standard. And the music that results from that often has the property to invoke a very strong trance in me, at least, because the sound design doesn't have a lot of variation. But that forces the composers to go even harder on the melodies and harmonies. And that's why I want to talk about it in this video. But I don't want to just stand here and talk like a podcast. Now let's get a little bit more practical. Now we are here in Bitwig and we have a beat that sounds like this. probably heard that this sounds rather similar to the music that is playing in games like Vampire Storm. You might already know games like that because like RPG Maker games is a whole genre of games basically and they all come from the fact that there is a software out there called RPG Maker that already exists for a really long time that people use to create well, games like that. And the cool thing about the software is that it's really easy to use. You don't have to be a crazy programmer to know how to use it, even though knowing how to program can be helpful. But let's not get too off topic again. I wanna show you what the thing is. And for that, I will mute one of the tracks for now and just look at the track that I call General MIDI, which contains all of the instruments, the melodic ones, the harmonic ones, and the drums. And if we look at one of them, for example, the piano in isolation. I basically use this plugin here called Bass MIDI VST. The term bass is a little bit misleading because this plugin is not just for bass sounds, it is for all kinds of sounds.
As you can hear, this sounds rather cheap. It is not the most pristine piano sound that you ever heard, but you could say that about all of the sounds in this beat. However, all of the sounds in this beat have sort of a common vibe. They fit to each other and that's why it works. The reason for that is because they are all based on the same sound font. In this free plugin, you can choose a sound font from a sound font file, in this case SF2, and I downloaded a huge folder of sound font files and apparently for this beat, I just randomly chose Casio SA 76 GM and it had the sound that you just heard and yeah you can load even more sound fonts but I like to just load one to not obscure the vibe of that sound font too much and then the plugin lets you have just some basic controls reverb chorus modulation and transpose but I typically don't even use them because I just want to have the most raw sound out of this the raw sound of the sound fonts to have just the iconic feeling that the sound fonts invoke by being ingrained in our brains from past gaming experiences and stuff like that. General MIDI describes sort of a standard how to synthesize MIDI messages because MIDI messages themselves are not music yet. They are just a list of events and they can also be interpreted in other ways like for a light show or something. But General MIDI is specifically made for music. Every program has its own instrument. One is always acoustic piano, two is always bright piano, three is always electric ground piano at least almost always and there are 128 instruments like that. For the drums in regular intervals there is another drum drum kit but not every sound font actually implements that sometimes there is just one kit or no kit at all however one peculiar thing about this is the drums are only on MIDI channel 10. Let's say you are composing a little bit of a rhythm and now you want it to be played by a drum set instead of whatever cursed thing that is. Now first of all you have to select channel 10 so you can choose the program of the drum set you want to have. In this case there is just one drum set on program 0. But it doesn't sound like drums yet. So what you are going to do is you will select all of these note events and change them to channel 10. Nice. And each drum sample is on a very specific note number. So you can just exchange your sound font with another sound font and all of the instruments will sound a little bit different but still be basically the same instrument which has a lot of cool implications. Before people used audio samples as ringtones for their mobile phones there was a short period of time where people used so-called polyphonic ringtones which were basically just MIDI files that were interpreted by the mobile phone sound card and just like that the sound chords of different consoles sound different and that gives us nostalgic feelings. So going back to my project you can see I wrote those numbers next to the instrument names like one piano 41 slow strings which sound very eerie on this sound font. You can hear a lot of lysing or something like that and that's kind of cool. It's just the vibe that this kind of sound also had back in the days. You wouldn't want to have a more high quality string sample here. That's just not what would work. Another little highlight here was the boat glass sound. Which comes together with this honky tonk. And with a harp. By the way, the folder of sound font that I just showed that I downloaded comes from this link which I will also link in the video description from the Internet Archive. 500 general MIDI sound fonts and I promise this took the whole night to download. I don't know if the servers are just bad or if it was my internet 
or if the file was just really big, but I had to keep my computer on the whole night long. And the next day when I woke up, I was really excited in anticipation of finding out if it has finally downloaded and if I can test it. And oh boy, it was ready and I was not ready for how iconic all these sounds were. I will of course also put the link to the plugin that I used into the video description if you want to use this plugin specifically. But I gotta say there are also a lot of alternatives for SFZ players and I haven't chosen this plugin for a very specific reason. It was just suggested to me. So here is the list of other sound font players. We can see there is for example Grace. Grace is a great sampler plugin with multi-sample support. I didn't know that it also supports sound fonts that's pretty cool i want to make a video about this actually i had this idea for a while because the way you can design your own multi-sample instruments has a really good workflow then there is also sforzando which is i think it is pretty popular for sound fonts looks like this there is also high life but i wouldn't really recommend using high life for anything that has to do with multi-sample support because you would have to use some sort of drop down for it and it's just very uncomfortable however it's a really good synthesizer for chopping up breaks like you can see here in this screenshot as well with these nice little cue points that you can trigger with midi messages that's pretty cool Tall also has a sampler with sound font support, it seems, and it even has a browser. Maybe that one has a better workflow than base MIDI VST. I gotta try it sometime. Okay, now that we covered the general MIDI folder in my project, let's just talk about the RPG Maker SFX folder, which has, for example, in the intro, these sounds. <laughs> And then in the transition, I will make the beat on as well for this, it has these two. And if you've played RPG Maker games, then you just know these sounds, they are familiar to you. The explosion sound, it is just iconic. And when you combine that with the music, you just get the full RPG Maker experience. <laughs> except for this vocal sample here, which has an attribution license on freesound.org. So that's why I have to attribute it right now. This is the attribution, Jacob Allen Evenlove.wave. <laughs> <laughs> and I pitched it down a little bit and then applied a bit crusher to eight kilohertz to make it sound a little bit more like some super old school sound card that processes audio on a lower sample rate on purpose in order to save cartridge space cartridge cartridge split cartridge cartridge space or something like that <clears throat> you might be wondering why should you now go ahead and use general media sounds if that is not exactly the vibe you are going for with your own music and i can even answer that i think because if there is one thing that i really like about this workflow it is that you already get 128 instruments that fit to each other. They might not be the best ever, but they are designed to fit to each other. So you can just focus on composing and you don't have to overthink your sound design and mix already while you haven't even composed a catchy melody yet or something. So I didn't use any effects at all on this thing. It would have messed with the consistency of the sounds to each other like the only effect is as I said on this vocal sounded only to make it fit to the other sounds a little bit more so that's fair so you could do that and if you are like me and you get easily distracted by the fact that you could make an effect chain of 20 effects in a row then this is very helpful to just get back to basics just listen to the melodies instead of the sound and then when you have the melodies you could still just replace the sounds with whatever synthesizer you want I'm not going to do that now because I like the sound of this. I like the nostalgic sound. Just saying if you are not in here for the sound of Vampires Dawn 3 or other RPG Maker games, then you can also use this to compose, well, anything you want. But RPG Maker game sounds are the best. General MIDI sounds. Fuck yeah.